I intend to nominate in uh, due time uh, a very well-qualified candidate. If we are following basic precedent, then that nominee will be presented before the committees, the vote will be taken, and ultimately they'll be confirmed. And that was the president speaking moments ago in California and fielding questions from reporters about Justice Antonin Scalia's replacement. And Senator Chuck Grassley says he's still undecided as to whether a hearing will be held on President Obama's eventual Supreme Court nomination. I would wait until uh, the nominee uh, is made before I would make any decisions. In other words, take it a step at the time. Grassley, the head of the Senate panel that weighs Supreme Court nominations, also says he believes the next president should decide who fills the high court vacancy, and he's not alone. Several senators, including Kelly Ayotte, Ron Johnson, Rob Portman, and Pat Toomey, are all calling for a delay on a new Supreme Court justice confirmation until next year. But Senator Patrick Leahy is taking a very different approach. In a USA Today op-ed, he writes, it's the Senate's duty to consider the merits of the president's nominee. The advice and consent role enshrined in our Constitution was not designed to allow a blanket prohibition of any nominee, but that is exactly where the Republican majority leader is trying to take us. Justin Anton Scalia's body will lie in repose at the Supreme Court building on Friday. His funeral will be held on Saturday as more Republican senators fall in line behind Majority Leader Mitch McConnell. The battle over his replacement is certain to go on long past then. It is going to be ugly. Miranda, thanks a lot for more on this. Let's bring in uh, Noah Rothman, assistant online editor at Commentary Magazine. Also, David Drucker, the senior congressional co correspondent at the Washington Examiner. Thanks so much for being with us, guys. Yeah, good to be here. All right, we just mentioned the Republican senators who are up for re-election this fall, and no guarantee that the Republicans will retain control of the United Senate, State Senate. But David, as you look at this, um, is this a good political strategy or a bad political strategy for these senators to come out so quickly before there is even a name of the nominee to just go ahead and say it's not going to happen? Well, look, Mitch McConnell, the Senate Majority Leader, made it clear it's not going to happen. And so you, know, you have two choices. And you can look at it from the perspective of your state and your voters. You can argue against your own party's leader, and that sometimes can serve you well, or you join in with him. And I, and I think that Supreme, the Supreme Court and all of this is an issue that can motivate both parties' bases. But I don't think that it would help the Republicans to hold the opposite position, to basically say that, no, they should confirm Obama's nominee to replace Scalia. So I think this is the best possible move for them. Um, and and I think that it's possible it could pay dividends for them, although not in every Senate election. All right, Noah, so Mitch McConnell perhaps giving some cover to his uh, fellow senators who need to run for re-election. But again, no uh, nominee's name has even been floated yet by, by Mitch McConnell. Do you see any downside to him doing this? Uh, well, I'm not entirely sure I do, actually. Uh, there is far more of a threat to vulnerable incumbent Republican senators from, I would imagine, a, a lack of a, of a turnout in November of this year on their side than there is from energized Democrats. <clears throat> and a lot of this, as you've noted, depends a lot on who President Barack Obama nominates for the court. Um, there's a lot of Democrats who want him to uh, inflict maximum pain, as CNN reported, on Republicans by forcing them to bulk at or not even hold hearings for a rather conventional pick, somebody who's perfectly co uh, confirmable, maybe somebody who's been confirmed already to a lower court. Uh, and then there's another school of thought which suggests that the Democrats or the president will be playing into the, uh, the a lot of the problems that, that liberals have with him, Bernie Sanders liberals in particular, by nominating a centrist. And they would prefer that this once in a generation opportunity be used to nominate a firebrand liberal. Uh, so th there's a lot of ifs here. And if the president makes a different choice than everybody suspects, which would be a confirmable nominee, uh, it really plays much more to the, to the Republicans' advantage. It almost seems like he just relished this opportunity to stand up there before the news cameras mm -hmm. and just throw it back on Senate Republicans saying they're being obstructionists again. It almost right. seemed like he was enjoying that opportunity. I, I think he was. You know, when, they, when he was asked that question from the reporter saying, are you going to nominate a moderate? He said firmly, no, I'm going to nominate someone who is qualified for the job. But he didn't just criticize Republicans. He was criticizing 
all politicians generally, bringing up some past examples of where it has been an issue on the Democrat side. Well, he, he did that in response to a question about his past opposition uh, mm -hmm. to Justice Samuel Alito, pointing out the fact that Alito is now on the bench. Uh, there is plenty of, there's plenty of time, David, as the president mentioned today, when you look at the historical uh, timeline of the, the way these things play out. Does he not have a point on, on that respect, though? There's 350 well, course, yeah, days. Well, yeah, of course he has a point. He's got about a year left, a little bit under a year, and there's plenty of time to get a new nominee on the bench. His term doesn't end until January 20th of next year. There's no reason he should stand down. But I think you have to look at this uh, politically from the vantage point of where the Republicans sit. They have a base that's very unhappy with them. You have a lot of conservatives and committed Republican voters out there that don't understand the value of a majority Republican Senate because so often it's hard to communicate to voters all of the things you probably stopped and the president probably never proposed right. knowing they would go nowhere. And all voters see is all the things you couldn't stop, all the executive orders and everything else that you have no power over. Well, here is something that tangibly Senate Republicans have the power to block that people can understand. And given the fact that so many Republicans on top of that see this president as someone who goes around them, around the Constitution all the time and ignores uh, their place in our branch, of, in our, the way our government's set up, there's a personal reason to basically say, yeah, you've got a year left, but so what? You ignore us, you ignore the Constitution, so we're going to take some liberties with our power, and we'll just not confirm anybody. But, but Noah, wouldn't that go, kind of go against what Scalia, Justice Scalia was all about, being this firm constitutionalist that he is, that the Constitution says the president has the right to nominate a justice? I think... I, I far be it for me to channel the late Justice Scalia, but I also think he would note that the Senate has every legal prerogative to mm -hmm. confer, consent and advise, and they also can withhold their consent. Uh, Democrats have, have appealed to a rather dubious precedent in the effort to say that there should be an election year confirmation in uh, Anthony Kennedy, who was confirmed in 1988. He was a third choice pick. And uh, the rather infamous Robert Bork hearings were one of the reasons why Anthony Kennedy was submitted in the first place. Democrats are appealing to that precedent, that very dubious precedent, to say, well, at least Robert Bork got a hearing. If that's what Democrats hope to get out of this, an extremely partisan fisking of a nominee, it, it reveals the extent to which their, their position is really very narrow. It's well, going to be ugly. It's a big risk, too, because Hillary Clinton yeah. could win and they, the, the Republicans could lose control of the Senate, too. Yeah, so that's what at stake. It's going to be an ugly election year. David Drucker, Noah Rothman, thank you both for joining us. Call him Teflon Trump just a day after threatening a third-party run in a lawsuit against Ted Cruz. New poll numbers show Trump on top.